B Monster Laboratory here. Today we're going to show temperature on our LCD 1602A display module. We're going to do that by connecting our display module and a thermistor sensor to our Elegumega 2560 board. Let's get started. This is a thermistor. It's a thermal resistor. It's a resistor that changes resistance as the temperature changes. And technically there's at least some slight changes in most resistors when the temperature does change, but oftentimes that's unmeasurable. But this particular resistor, the thermal resistor, the thermistor, is designed to show dramatic changes in resistance as the temperature increases or decreases. And there are two types of thermistors. There's a negative temperature coefficient thermistor, and that's what we'll be using here. And those are for measuring temperature. And then there's a positive temperature coefficient thermistor. And those are often used as resettable fuses. So as the temperature increases, the resistance would increase. And that would cut off your flow, your current flow that went through this. And there it would, uh, it would protect your circuit board so it wouldn't heat up. But today we're going to use the negative temperature coefficient thermistor and we're going to use that to display a temperature on our LCD screen. So I have the thermistor connected to a multimeter and you can see a reading of 10.93k ohms and that will change even if I pinch it. It'll drastically change. As you can see it's going down quite a bit. So it'll get down to around 7.14, I think, eventually. And if I let go of it, it'll go back up, of course. Now I'll go ahead and make all the connections, and I'll start from right to left, just because it's easier. First connection was the 5 volt to the a positive rail down here, power supply. Next I'll put the potentiometer on here and I'll have it straddle this a little groove here. The two pins on the bottom part and the one pin on the top. I'll connect the right pin to the negative rail here or to the ground rail and I'll connect the left pin to the positive rail and I'll connect the middle pin of the potentiometer to the VO pin of my LCD screen. I attach the VSS pin to the negative rail or the ground rail. I attach the VDD pin to the 5 volt positive rail right here. So all the pins that I'm using are going to be right here, the pulse width modulation pins, the digital pins. I attached RS to the pin 7. I attached RW to the negative or the ground rail here. And I attached the E pin to pin 8. Now I've attached my data pins D4, D5, D6, and D7. D7 is attached to the 12th pin. D6 is attached to the 11 pin. D5 is attached to the 10 pin and D4 is attached to the 9 pin. I have connected the A pin to the positive rail and I have connected the K pin to the negative rail and then from there to the ground pin. So the last thing I did was connect my thermistor here. The left pin is connected to the positive rail and then the right pin is connected to the A0 analog and then also I used my 10k resistor and connected that to the negative rail. Thank you. 
Here is the connection schematic if you had any uh, problems or questions about the connections that you need. This is straight from the Mega 2560 uh, software, the run through for the, the lessons. And down here is the wiring diagram too, that's really helpful as well. So this should clear up any questions that you uh, may have had along the way. So we finished the wiring for our board. We've got all the wires in place. If this looks a lot like lesson 22, where I just wired the LCD screen. That's because it is. And uh, we've also added the thermistor over here to the analog pin on the board. And we've added a 10K resistor right here. So that's the only difference. If you're unfamiliar with that or you need to brush up on your connections for the LCD screen, there's some good information about wiring your LCD screen in the Lesson 22 video. And I will post that in the description below. So if you need to, check that out. But as for now, we're ready to plug in our board to our computer. And to get this up and running, let's uh, turn to our computer here. All right, now as we've done in previous videos, we just open up our Elegoo folder here that came with our, our kit, and we'll go into code, go create a code, and we'll just, uh, very simple, we'll scroll down here to lesson 23 thermometer. And this is the easiest way to get the software up and running, have all the code in place. We'll open that up and it'll be ready. We just upload it to our board. If you want to take a look at the code real quick, come up here. This indicates that you need to have Liquid Crystal Library installed. If you don't have it installed, you're not sure how to install it, I have a video that I will link below. It's uh, installing and setting up Arduino IDE. Uh, so this indicates that it, this is, code is coming from the Liquid Crystal library that I installed. So we come down here and you see this. This just indicates what pins uh, that you have connected in case you want to change them in the future. It just makes it easier uh, to know. Although I think this is supposed to be RS instead of BS. There is no BS pin on my, my uh, LCD screen. I think that's supposed to be RS because RS is connected to 7, E is connected to 8, D4 is connected to 9, and so on. Now down here you see LCD begin 16.2. That just indicates that I have 16 columns and two rows on my LCD screen. Now we look down here to the loop and we see that the thermistor is providing an analog value. And we want to turn that value into a temperature. So here is the formula for Kelvin. Since we don't usually measure temperature in Kelvin in everyday life, we want to change that to Celsius, right? So we come down here. And this is the formula to go from, to convert Kelvin to Celsius. And some of us use the Fahrenheit scale. And in order to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit, we come down here to this formula. That would give you your Fahrenheit. And if we take a look at the bottom portion of our loop, we see that uh, the LCD set cursor 00, zero that is the first position, row 1, column 1. And it, uh, the screen is going to print temperature with a big space in between the C. And the reason we do that is because in between there we want our actual temperature. And we see that down here at the set cursor. And you're going to set the uh, temperature, the actual temperature at position 6, 0. That is the sixth column and the first row. That's 0, first row. And from this position we see LCD print uh, temperature C, right? It's not temperature F because anything after the the little slash marks here is not included in the code. That is just comment. Let's go ahead and load this up as it is and see what our screen says. Go up here to upload. Shouldn't have any problems. All right, now we'll switch back over to our camera. So after we've uploaded our code, this is what you should see on your screen. It says temp 23.93 and C for Celsius. Let's get back to the code and quickly change that to Fahrenheit if you're like me and you use a Fahrenheit measurement. So we switch back to the code here and we'll come down here instead of temp C, let's do temp F for Fahrenheit. And instead of temp C right here, let's do temp F for Fahrenheit because temp F is defined up here. So let's upload that to our board. And there it has changed.
So I can tell you right now it's not 77.96 degrees Fahrenheit where I am. Um, this will normalize. It'll take a minute or two to normalize and, and come down. This is interesting. I left it running for about five minutes and I left the room. And I came back in, it was 72 point something, 72.5. It has now gone up to 73.5.65. And uh, that's just probably an indication of how sensitive that is. I think maybe even breathing near it could uh, could could change the temperature. Definitely touching it will raise the temperature, as you can see, quite a bit. And if I let it go, it'll go back down. So even breathing on it and maybe even operating a camera around it. I had the camera zoomed right up on it, so that could have affected the temperature as well. And uh, like I said, it's all plugged in, so maybe it was just picking up some some heat from uh, from something around it. But anyway, I mean, in an empty room, it got down to 72. So I'm intended to believe that it's closer to 72, maybe 73 degrees in this room, because it's a small room. But uh, that's what it is. Well, that's all I've got for this video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Also, what projects are you working on with your Arduino? As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you again very soon.